Um, and, and, and Andre's awesome and obviously plays an important role, but we have a, a lot of really talented people yeah. driving things. So, um, and uh, Ashok is actually the, the head of autopilot engineering. Um, uh, uh, Andre is sort of director of AI. AI stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's. I'm aware that there's an incredible team of just a lot going on. Yeah, just uh, mm -hmm. you know, obviously people people will give off, will give me too much credit and they'll give Andre too much credit. So, and people should realize how much is going on under the yeah. Under the it's just a lot of really talented people. Um, the Tesla Autopilot AI team is extremely talented. It's like some of the smartest people in the world. Just after an action-packed weekend full of Optimus Spot news, Cybertruck revelations, and political drama injected into the electric vehicle transition, the lead of Tesla's full self-driving team, Ashok Eliswamy, throws a jab in Mobileye's direction while responding to an ex post about the bot. As you can imagine, there's overlap within the teams at Tesla responsible for Optimus, FSD, and AI. So it would be fitting to see Ashok chime in with his thoughts about the ever-controversial debate about if cameras are enough sensory data to navigate our world. In his own words, Neural networks plus cameras work amazingly well and are really the solution to robotics. Same solution for the car, for Optimus, and will be for all such artificial animals. Concise and it makes sense to me, but the real kicker was in a follow-up reply and perhaps a subtle or not so subtle retort to Mobileye CEO Professor Amnon Tashwa's blog post. Ashok continued in a reply saying, These robots do use additional sensing such as audio, proprioception, and temperature, etc., just like most animals, but no LiDAR, radar, ultrasonics, HD map shenanigans. It'll become so obvious over the coming years, we'll be wondering why anyone thought those were a great idea. You can feel the belief and confidence in the system he and his team are creating. It's not too surprising that Ashok ended up seeing eye to eye with Elon about how vision was the way to go if you just know a little bit more about his history. The Carnegie Mellon graduate student created a semi-autonomous navigation system using just steer camera vision during a project to enhance an explosive ordnance disposal robot. After graduating from university, Ashok interned at Volkswagen where he worked on another camera-based perception system, one that would help Volkswagen's cars recognize road marks and signage. What is surprising though is how he ended up at Tesla. The aforementioned Mobileye was actually working with Tesla in its early days to enhance their vehicle's driver assistance features. That was until 2015 when Elon felt their advancements in vision-based autonomy was making strides and eventually would prove to be superior to the costly LiDAR-based systems that Mobileye preferred. Looking to flesh out his autopilot teams, Elon took to Twitter to solicit applications, and Ashok ended up being the first person he hired from that post. So as former partners and now competitors with disparate ideas on how to achieve autonomy, the animosity between Mobileye and Ashok becomes clearer. To further add on top of the FSC news of the day, Barron's had an interesting article recently published titled, Barron's Test Drives Tesla's Self-Driving Software for a Month, What We Discovered. I wouldn't say Barron's holds any particular bias against Tesla or Elon, but I was bracing myself for an overly critical piece and I'm not pretending that FSD 11 is perfect, but the article is pretty fair from my perspective. In all actuality, I personally wonder how many resources are devoted to the software-based version of full self-driving. We know from Walter Isaacson's book about Elon that he gave the autopilot team permission to devote all their resources to the neural net-based FSD system, leaving the current beta to be patched sparingly. Let's check out the article from Al Root over at Barron's. Al addresses the fact that Elon foresees a future where full self-driving adds trillions to Tesla's market cap, and some bullish analysts and the Tesla fanbase fully agrees, of course. He goes on to mention that detractors call it vaporware or dangerous. And instead of saying detractors, he can say Dan O'Dowd or Gordon Johnson if he'd like to. But after a month of testing, Al finds the software impressive, except for nuances at the opposite ends of the spectrum. He makes reference to a teenager learning to drive, to an older person's appreciation for the abundance of caution. Nor do I hate that overly cautious nature of FSD more than when it comes to how Tesla's approach stop signs, and Al does mention that later on in the article. The writer also clarifies that the system is not autonomous, which might be helpful to the reader base of Barron's to dispel any myths of self-driving cars running amok with drivers sleeping inside. But Al overall likes FSD, saying that it works in most situations and makes life easier and driving safer. It's great on the highway, and he finds interventions are rare. He goes on to highlight that in a world of human drivers and computer ones, there's a clash of reality and rules. I don't think any driver appreciates another driver coming to complete stops, and Al wrote that the way the car creeps up the intersections cautiously surprised other drivers. Not a fan of this myself, as I talked about before. At the end comes the financial bits, and Al states the wide range of views of the future prospects of Tesla's valuation, with Tesla bull Cathy Wood seeing $155 billion a year EBITDA by 2027, whereas the Wall Street analysts project about $23 billion EBITDA next year. 
We've addressed that Wall Street only cares about the here and now and sees Tesla as an auto manufacturer with just slightly higher margins than the average car maker and who happens to sell software as a service to a small fraction of the install base. Some of the Tesla faithful would call this a buying opportunity with the Wall Street quote, not getting it. We can only hope so. Though I do like how Elle makes reference to AI in the future that Adam Jonas and Morgan Stanley sees, I was wanting him to touch a little bit more on the upcoming version of FSD, version 12 that is. I really don't think FSD 11 is getting much attention anymore, but that take might be a little bit too nuanced for the average Barron's reader. Al, at the end of the article, says investors should pay attention to FSD, and he's right. Either way this goes, it will be an explosive move eventually. I'll pray it's upwards.